How do you create a cinematic shot inside of Blender? Let me show you. Okay, I was joking. This was an unfinished short film and absolutely not abandoned project that I started working on last year. And this series almost suffered the same fate only after one video, so I couldn't let that happen. So, last week I started this project, but didn't finish it in time. So to fix that and produce a video for this week, I started another project. Impressive. Very nice. But it was far from being very nice, so I decided to scrap it. So instead, let's watch myself work on some project that I almost abandoned as well, while I try to break down what's happening in this clip that is recorded way too fast and sped up way too much. Let's go. So I started by extruding some vertices, trying to keep the curvature the same as for the cutout that I made earlier, by duplicating the, the outline from the bumper. So you can just do that in edit mode, then select it and then separate by selection, like I did here. And then I added some loops, tried to connect shapes, and this is where your mind can get uh, quite philosophical almost, and just trying to draw lines everywhere, trying to connect, okay, if, can I just pick this one and try to connect it over there? And then you realize it doesn't work at all, and you scrap it a thousand times. So as, as you can see, I had an idea in mind where I would have like the center part separated from the sides, and I made it smooth here, but it would not be like this in the end. I just wanted to create the main shapes and then have the sides, have the details, sorry, being added after once the base mesh was created. Since the rest of the vehicle has this very sharp and edgy look, I want to recreate that into the rear bumper as well. And for this reason, I will use very geometric lines and try to break angles in ways that are not so subtle, you could say not having shallow little angle and subtle angle change but very dramatic lines. While I'm doing all of this I'm also trying to keep the surface quality quite high because I don't plan to make a second version of this bumper. What you see will be the final bumper. Of course this will be a base mesh so no cutouts, no extreme details or no vents or um, exhaust tips for example only the big surfaces that you will then use um, to add details on top of it. And because I'm recording this, uh, the voiceover after the video was recorded and the bumper has been modeled, it's very easy for me to, to say that. But while I was working on it, I wasn't sure exactly what the direction I wanted to go to, so that's why you see me adding like details that are not yet necessary to try to get a feel of the final look, uh, like the exhaust tips you saw. And I also wanted to have maybe a bit of a curvature or a sweep, a sweeping line in the bottom, but that didn't fit with the rest of the car, so you will see me try to fiddle a lot with it, try to make it work, but in the end I just scrapped that idea and decided to go back to the more angled and sharper lines. When you have um, multiple loops that are quite short like this and not connected to the rest, um, just like in this scenario, this kind of branch that you see extending out, if you want to reset the curvature in a nicer way, because you have moved some loops individually, you can lose the you can well, you can use the loop tools add-on. That's a built-in add-on. It's free and super quick to install. And then you right-click, select loop tool, and then curve at the top of the, the add-on menu if you want. And this will allow you to create this cubic curvature, so like this perfect curvature based on the loops you selected. And you will see me use this technique quite a lot here um, with this section of the bumper. Now here I was trying to, to find a way to fill this area. Uh, you don't want it to be just one big surface, otherwise it would be um, look too empty to like unused space almost and there were already plenty of that on the upper section of the car so I wanted to kind of fill this section and I knew that the uh, uh, that the exhaust would be there but I didn't know what shape it would have and what kind of cutouts or details around I would want to uh, to have so I started 
playing with this, trying to find some angles, trying to work uh, with different shapes. And once I was happy with that result, I decided to fill in the interior of that surface because it will be cut out, but maybe not in, in its entirety. So I wanted to turn this into a base mesh and then therefore I had to fill that hole beforehand. So now you will see me try to, well not try, I mean I've done this a thousand times, so just shrink wrap the new panel on top of the base mesh. And so I might have explained it in a thousand of videos, but you just want to have one of the mesh have a higher subdivision level to have more geometry to work with once you shrink wrap it onto. And this is what I'm doing here, I'm trying to keep everything organized and making collections because once your car has 500 meshes, it gets really messy and you want to have a very organized file if you ever want to continue working on this and have fun while doing it. And so I tried to look at references and I saw that the Kia K5 has this uh, shiny piece of plastic at the bottom and I thought it was uh, quite a cool detail so I wanted to replicate it here and you can see do well, you can see me doing some retopology uh, to just fix the corners and the little areas that uh, kind of became jagged once I separated it into two meshes. Once that is done, I started working on some fake exhaust tips uh, to kind of fill and add more details in general, just to fill the area and see if what I had in mind was going to fit the car, look good, or if it was just a waste of time and I should try to find some new ideas before going too far into that bumper. Whenever you work with uh, 3D and product design in general, I think it's very important to check your materials as soon as possible. Um, there's no point really in working uh, with a final design in just solid view with shades of grey. Um, with Blender it's so fast to be able to see how the final um, product will look like with the real materials, with the real colors and real textures. So you can see me doing doing it quite a lot here, try to, to see, okay, does it look fine? Should I tweak the color? And yeah, just a quick tip I thought that could be interesting here. Here you can see that I was doing some ridges to add some little texture and extra details to it. And that was pretty much the end of the main shapes of the bumper and the time I had for this week. And so I hope you liked the video and I'll see you next week with hopefully a finished project. See you.